Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 25th. First up, this is from Wired Magazine. You've probably seen on the news that there are a number of vehicles that are, have the potential to be hacked, and to the extent that somebody can take fully control of the steering, brakes, and all kinds of things. Well, the author of this article, Andy Greenberg, took up a challenge by two hackers and drove a Jeep Cherokee, a 2014 Jeep Cherokee, and the two hackers, Charlie Miller and Chris Va- Valasek, were in a basement 10 miles from where this SUV was being driven as they slowly took over controls of this thing from just uh, messing around with them a little bit and doing the uh, turning on and off the air conditioning, windshield wipers, radio, stuff like that, screwing with it, to, to being able to take over the steering and the braking, to be able to even totally disable the braking. That's what really concerns me. I was thinking myself, and if any mechanic people know about this and uh, have any information about the Jeep Cherokee, the 2014 Jeep Cherokee is the braking system totally fly-by-wire. I would think that the mechanical linkage to most braking systems would allow to where nobody could totally disable the brakes to where you couldn't use them. But according to this author, as he was driving along, his brakes were totally non-functioning. He could push the pedal and the brakes just would not operate at all. So looks like they may have disabled the mechanical linkage and it's just totally uh, uh, just electronic or or something like that because if it's mechanical and it's attached I don't know how you could theoretically you'd have to the only other way you could disable the brakes is you'd have to have some kind of a locking mechanism to allow the person not to uh, um, push on the brakes and get the the fluid the hydraulic fluid to actually go to the brakes they didn't say specifically on here if the uh, handbrake was still operational or not it didn't say if he chose to use it or not so I don't know for sure if this 2014 Jeep Cherokee still has a an operating handbrake that you could pull and mechanically activate the brakes to stop it. But this gives cause for a lot of concern. I think, especially, I don't I don't think vehicles should be designed to where, at the very very least, you can uh, uh, have the have possibility at all of the brakes being disabled. I mean, basically, then you're just giving yourself the potential to become a a weapon of some sort, uh, being used by remote control. And what I will also post up here, too, is from Wired Magazine, and it's how hackable is your car? Consult this handy chart, and they have a chart of 20 vehicles, if you scroll down, that are potentially hackable. Now, that's not saying that hackers have gotten into the entire systems and controlled them as much as they have with this 2014 Jeep, but all of these vehicles do have the potential to be hacked. Now, uh, Chrysler did issue a recall, and they're going to send a USB thumbstick to people to update their software to make the Jeep less hackable and they've also done some things with the people that uh, control the wireless network that talks to these vehicles to make it less hackable but to me have the potential for a vehicle even to be able to even if a mechanic can do it I don't like the idea of even a mechanic having the potential from remote control to being able to disable the brakes so that they don't function and stop the car that should be the very last safety mechanism let alone uh, you know, taking control of the car steering or something like that. I think you should always have the ability to safely stop the car, if nothing else, and that's with the car even totally powered down. So, yeah, if you want to watch, they probably will be publishing lists of this, and uh, I definitely would not want to own one of those cars. I wouldn't even want one of those cars if somebody gave it to me myself. And next up, this is from... CBS Channel 5 News, NASA mission discovers cousin to Earth. NASA announced Tuesday that its Kepler mission has found the first near-Earth-sized planet with a sun very similar to our own. Uh, That's the key here, too. They found other planets that they call Earth-like planets because they're similar in size, which means they possibly could be rocky planets. Doesn't mean they are, just means possibly. But evidently, Kepler 452b, which is 1,400 light-years away, is just slightly larger than Earth, and it's circling around a star that's similar to ours. So a few of the conditions we can say for sure are similar to what is uh, happening between our sun and uh, our planet itself. But other than that, everything else pretty much is a guess. I mean, uh, I've seen people talk about the artist's renderings of this thing. They have uh, artist renderings of it where it looks similar to Earth with oceans and continents and stuff like that. There's no way of even knowing. We don't know for sure this thing even has an atmosphere of any type. We do not know for sure this has any kind of liquid water. I heard one planetary scientist on the radio say this could be a small version of a planet like Neptune for all they know. So trying to say that this thing is Earth-like in any way, shape, or form, 
we don't have enough information to know that whatsoever. And it's kind of interesting, this author on the Huffington Post, Jeffrey Schweitzer, was getting into this big argument. He, he evidently thought this was just about a planet identical to Earth and said, well, somehow this di disproves God exists and disproves the Bible because, see, it's another Earth just like us. So I'm guessing he's assuming that it has people walking around on it, something, <coughs> something like us or things like that. But they do not have any information. All they basically have is just the size and the type of star it's going around, and, and they can assume by the size that it's at least a, a round, spherical type of shape, and that is about all you can really, from what they know, that's about all you can say for sure. And last up, bacon-flavored seaweed, more nutritious than kale, is the next foodie craze. Scientists say they've created a strain of seaweed that, when fried, tastes just like bacon. And the author makes a comment on here, sure, we'll believe it when we taste it. Uh, yeah, that's what I say myself, too. It would sure be nice if it is true, but uh, I've tasted turkey bacon, too, and it ain't even close to what bacon is. Maybe a little bit in the texture, but that's about it. But Oregon State University researchers announced earlier this week that they've patented a strain of seaweed known as dulce that not only tastes good, but also packs more nutrients, more nutrients than in kale, originally developed to feed abalones for commercial harvesting. I guess they do actually use it in Europe. It says they add it to, to make uh, add the powder to smoothies or add flakes onto food. And it's also used in, what else do they say here? Uh, ice crackers, salad dressing, and I think it's also used in soups too besides that. So this is a food stuff that's been used as a food stuff before. And I would be interested in trying it, too. If it does taste similar to bacon, it might be something I might enjoy myself. But, uh, yeah, we can always we can always hope, even though, you know, might not be a big possibility it does. But that would be really cool, especially if it was cheaper. If it tasted exactly like bacon and was a lot cheaper than bacon and easier to grow and more of it, that would be super cool. So, anyway, that's about it for this week. I would like to thank... My contributors this week would be, for the different articles, that would be Bob H., Aaron M., David F., and Frank P. Thank you for the articles, and thank you for everybody that continues to contribute. And thank you, all of you, that continue to contribute to the Facebook group page. I appreciate that very much. So take care, everybody, and I will catch you next week.